Hi friends, today we are going to talk about one interesting shape that is a circle or a sphere and we see many different things which are either round or circular or in 3D in the spherical shape and today we are going to discuss the reason behind it. It's very interesting, just pay attention. So we are going to look at three objects. The first one is water drops. The next one is a soap bubble and the last one is earth. Three different objects but they all are spheres. And just imagine if we blew bubbles and they were in different shapes. Triangular shapes, cones, then pentagons, hexagons, but they are all always spherical, right? Something to think about. So. The first object water drops are made entirely of water. The next soap bubble inside there is gas and outside there is a layer of soap and water. And earth, it is made of lot of materials, some solid, some liquid, some molten metal, but that's also is in the shape of a sphere. So now let's look at the first object, water drops, right? If we take a microscope and then dig deeper into a water drop, if we make it a billion pieces, we'll see a lot of molecules, right? So that's why water molecules and all the molecules attract each other equally. So what happens is the molecules which are inside, they cancel each other all the forces cancel each other but the molecules which are on the surface surface is nothing but just the outermost layer they all experience forces from the molecules that are inside inwards so they are always pulled inwards but there are no water molecules outside to pull them out so they all are experiencing the force inward. So what happens is they all the molecules on the outer layer, they are pulled inwards and they form the least energy state or the shape, which is a circle in 3D. That's nothing but a sphere. And this property, the outermost molecules binding tightly is called surface tension okay so that's the property which is making the shape sphere spherical so now if we look at the soap bubble it's slightly different but similar here we have gas molecules inside when you blow into a balloon or you make a soap bubble all all the inside there is nothing but gas molecules right they are in a free state they are bombarding the outer layer they are trying to come out they're exerting a force but the same thing the outer layer is a thin layer of soap and water all the molecules there they are binding very tightly with each other and they are not breaking apart if they break apart then the bubble bursts so there is a very thin balance between the forces that the gas molecules are exerting outwards and the water and soap molecules which are binding together. Again, the same force, they are binding together and they are pulled inwards, surface tension. It applies here, it applies here. After some time, the bubble is in existence. What happens is water starts to evaporate. So this bond becomes weak. There isn't enough water to go around and this bubble will burst. Or if we blow a lot of gas, then this water and soap layer is not strong enough to hold on to all the gas molecules, it bursts. That's why if you keep on blowing air into a balloon, it bursts. There isn't enough strength left. The last factor here is earth as we know earth has been forming for billions of years right so it was all space debris gas slowly it cooled down then what happened is all this 
bodies which are in space they are so huge they have a force called gravity that pulls everything towards the center the same gravity is also working on earth we are not flying off to space we are staying on earth because of gravity so what happens is here at the center there is the gravity all the points on the outer layer are pulled inwards equally with the force of gravity so what happens is uh, you are pulling all the points that are in space towards the center so what happens this gravity force because it's pulling all the points equally on the outer layer they come into the shape which is the most natural and least energy shape which is a sphere or a circle so gravity is the force which is responsible for making the earth into a round shape but there is a little twist in the story as we know earth spins around its axis we have day and night because of that we see different shapes of the moon which is also inspired by that so what happens is because it's spinning so fast around its axis in this circle there is a force called centrifugal force it is pushing all the points outwards it's the same force when you have a stone tied to a string and you spin it around the stone tries to fly off in any outward direction that's called centrifugal force so the same force is applied here so what happens is because it's spinning like this there is very little force on the top at the poles but in the equatorial line there is the maximum force because they are the farthest away from the axis that is spinning so there's a lot of force which is pushing these points in the outward direction with time what has happened is this there's a slight bulge because of this centrifugal force and we don't have a perfect sphere for earth but a slightly oval shape which is explained by so the earth's shape is explained by two forces gravity and centrifugal force gravity makes it circular and the slight bulge or the oval shape is because of the centrifugal force so we learned about four forces surface tension gravity and centrifugal and they all come to the same end point which is a spherical shape which is the most natural because there are different forces which are attracting all the outermost points inward equally I hope this video was helpful. We'll be explaining much more interesting concepts in the future. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Thank you very much. Enjoy.